Dario, here we are. 250S, I haven't had the chance to drive it yet, but you've driven it a lot. So just where are we in the programme? I think the first thing to say is it is incredibly different than T50. Well, that's actually by design because I learnt the hard way with the F1 where I, I absolutely said to everybody else in the business, I wanted to concentrate on a road car, you know, try and make the best driver's car for the road and then got forced into racing it in 95. It was quite successful though. It wasn't bad, yeah. It was a pain trying to turn a, what is a soft road car, if you like, into a racing car and the aerodynamics and everything that were difficult. Um, so this time I said to the team right from day one, we'll have a separate team. We want to build the ultimate driver's car for the road and we want to do the ultimate track experience. Not the fastest car, it won't be, there'll be, always be things faster than it, but the best fun you can have around the track. So we had two teams and we did it separately. So that's probably why you, know, you feel it's that different from 50. I think the first thing to point out is it's fun. We have tested a lot in Spain with the car and even you know, tested I think four days in a row, went home for the weekend, mm -hmm. came back, jumped in the car and the first lap, was like a big smile on my face again. And just, just the pure enjoyment of, of driving it. And that's, I think sometimes road, Race cars, mm -hmm. track cars, they're not necessarily the most enjoyable to drive. They're tools to, yeah. to do a job, aren't they? Yeah. This is not like that. This mm -hmm. is bloody quick. It's not beat about the bush. The downforce level, the 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 lightweight, the engine, it, it all just adds to a really quick package. Mm -hmm. You can turn a really quick lap time in it and it's pin sharp and it's razor sharp. But then if you drive it, maybe you're not experienced enough mm -hmm. um, to, to drive it close to its limit, it makes you feel good at sort of half speed. Yeah, It's not like a skateboard, you know, a lot of downforce cars. Uh, oh, that, that's good actually, because what, what I was going to ask you is that, you know, there'll be some of the owners that aren't race drivers, um, but you can drive fast cars, but maybe not professional level. And I was going to ask you, you know, what you thought about that, because I think it's important that people enjoy the car and can enjoy the car. Yeah, it doesn't matter your ability. You've got to get in this thing, and it's about that that enjoyment. And I think we've we've done that. You know, slow corners. You you. I'm used to in a, in, a, in a heavy downforce car. You get to the slow corner, and the car almost sits up on its toes. The head, mm. the stiff springs, um, don't really work. The car slides across the surface. This is completely the opposite. Oh, good. Um, but in the fast corners. Mm -hmm. you still got all that lovely downforce. So uh, the, the, the team have done a really good job yeah. with that, with getting the, the centre of pressure mm -hmm. of the car, the aerodynamic centre of pressure, spot on. Um, it's not a pitch sensitive car. You know, things like the, the ABS, it just, you can just mash the pedal mm -hmm. and, and it sort of takes you all the way into the corner. You've still got that analogue driving experience, but it helps you in a way, maximise lap time, mm -hmm. but it's also a safety net. The same with the traction control. Um, we've got that really, really nice now that when it intervenes. We've driven it a lot in the wet too. Oh, I know, and I've, I've seen some videos <laughs> of how quick it's gone in the wet. It's um, quite rapid. As the traction control intervenes, it's not sort of horrible mm -hmm. on-off. It's, it's, it's very subtle. Mm -hmm. You've got multi-position switch as well with it. But then also, you can switch it off. You know, we do a very serious job, but Steve and I were having a, a competition to see who could leave the biggest black lines out of corners <laughs> with the car. And the great thing about it was, you know, have those hairpins at Navarra, for yeah. instance, you can light up the rear tires and you can play and with hold, the car. And hold it, yeah. And hold it, it mm. talks to you. It sort of says, Brilliant. right, here comes the slide. Mm. It's, not, it's pointless having a car that, you know, that maybe I can get in it and I can sort of, get round and it's absolutely on the razor's edge, but nobody else wants to drive it because they're all scared of it. Mm. This car does not do that. That's it, brilliant, it, it that really is. So we, we certainly got that one right. And, and, the, and the engine, you know, I mean, we, we all know that the T50 engine is the highest revving, fastest response, highest specific output for, a, for an engine on the road uh, of all time. And, and now we've got nearly 780 horsepower in this from four litres. It's, it's phenomenal, you know, it, it's, pretty, it's pretty near 200 horsepower per litre. You know, I never thought about it like that. Yeah. For an engine on something that's not actually a racing car, you know, it's still meant to be drivable, yes. um, as, as we've just said. I, I just think that's 
mind-boggling, you know. It's a, di a much different characteristic in the engine mm. than T50. Um, you really feel the sort of the switch about 8,000 RPM yeah. when the secondary injectors come in, when the cam comes on, and it's a, it's got a real step up in. in well, of course, power. to save weight, we've dumped the variable valve timing, and we've saved a lot of weight getting rid of stuff on the engine that you don't need on a on a track engine. The reason why we could get away with that is, it, yes, the engine will be a bit more lumpy under 4,000 revs, for example, but. You don't care on a track car, that's just trundling down the pit lane. You know, once you get yeah. going, the engine should sing still. You know? No, absolutely. And you've mm. got the, you know, you, you use the gearbox a lot more, because again, because of that, it's, it's got a it's much peakier mm -hmm. power delivery. So you use the, you know, the, the, the paddle shift a lot more, mm -hmm. keep it in the, and the power band, it will still spin the tires in fourth gear <laughs> with the TCs off in the dry. <laughs> in the wet, the old bets are off. <laughs> it's 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 quite something, um, but it's been a really fun development process. Mm. You know, being for me being back at the track with a race team, essentially yeah. working with the the engineers in in GMA, the the, the other suppliers. Yeah, it's good that it's fun to drive because I can remember saying at the launch, this isn't designed to be the fastest car around the circuit. You know, there'll be other much more extreme cars that could be quicker on a lap time, but it has to be the best driving experience and the, and the most fun you can have. And I said, I said at the time, I remember, until somebody else makes a sub 900 kilo car with a 12,000 RPM V12 and a central driving position, it's gonna to be tough to beat that experience. Yeah. I think experience is a key word. Yeah. You know, you notice it in a, in a, call it a medium speed corner, mm -hmm. the speed of the change of direction, the lack of mass. And on top of that, all that good stuff, uh, the driving experience, the analog experience, all, all the stuff we've talked about. Um, once again, with the sound of the car. <laughs> the sound. It's just, we have definitely nailed that one. It's just insane, the sound, you know. It's the art of sound taken to the absolute extreme. It really is. When you, I mean, all the technicians, the engineers in the development team, they've been there, they've seen it, they've done it. A lot of those guys worked with you mm -hmm. even back in the 80s. Yes. When the car goes out on those first runs and they all pull out their phones and take videos, I was doing the same thing, videoing when Steve went out in, in XP1. It is that extreme, but then we've also got a silencer for it. Now, if we have to get uh, get down below a certain decibel mm -hmm. level, we think we can get less than 100 dB wow. with the with mm -hmm. the the silencer kit with no loss in power. But the interesting part of that is then you really hear the induction noise because yeah. it comes towards you, and then it disappears, and then you hear almost silence. <laughs> The noise. I think anybody who was at Festival of Speed last year at Goodwood would have would have experienced oh, yeah. the, I mean, the lunacy. We had a lot of people comment on that at the Festival of Speed. But again, that's not tuned, is it? That's just not at all. No, it's actually it's very natural. It's as it comes off the dyno. We haven't we haven't done anything to enhance the sound or tune it in any way, shape, or form. That's just how the engine is. You know. We've got one more test to really honing on that final setup, mm -hmm. you know, a bit more damper work, springs, cambers, caster, you know, the toe-in, that's just very, you know, the rake of the car. So we're really, we've got that to do. Yeah. Um, and then we've got a final sign-off test. And you've seen a lot of the, the specs, you've sat in a lot of the spec sessions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And each one named after, each car named after one of your wins. Uh, that sort of came to me in a, in a sort of a flash of inspiration. I just thought, it's only 25 cars, you know, and uh, it's nice to sort of give the car a bit of prehistory and a character. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the owners, each car will have a special book that only the owners get. And it'll be the book with the background story to that circuit, that race, the driver, and the car, all in a, all in a special book. Of course, the car's got a chassis plate and the plaque with the circuit diagram on it. It just makes it, yeah, 
gives it gives it a little bit of history already. You know, when when you when you buy the car, and hopefully, you know, let's say the Monaco car, that will always be the Monaco car. It'll yeah. be known as that. You know, or the or the Anderstorp car or whatever. Um, so it was just something I thought would be a bit of fun, really. And then, of course, naming it after my old mate and and driver, Nicky Lauda, because Nicky had just not long gone actually when we announced 50S and I just thought you know it's the fan car uh, once again he won the one and only race with the fan car in Anderstorp in 78 he was more than just a driver with us you know we became very very good friends and uh, I just thought it would be a nice thing to do we got a hold of the family and they thought it would be a nice thing to do too so that's why it's uh, 50S Nicky Lauda. It's a cool tribute. Mm -hmm. It really, it really he would have loved it. <laughs> oh yeah, no, definitely. His name on such a special yeah. car. Yeah. How do you think the customers are going to use them? Well, I hope. I like the road cars. I hope that you know they get used a lot. One, one of the things we I rarely wanted to do, and the teams delivered, is so many of these track cars. You need a team to start them. You need a team to some. Some of them you can't even keep at home. You know, T fifty S is complete different story. I mean, you literally have, you get to the circuit. You don't actually even need a mechanic or anybody helping you. Check the tire pressures, start the engine and warm the oil up. And once the oil's warm, you're ready to go. There's nothing else to do. <laughs> um, but, and, and, and that's by design. You know, mm -hmm. I wanted the car to be very usable and not a hassle to use. So I'm hoping the average usage will be much higher than, than some track cars. You know, people, it's, it's easy to use, it's fun to drive, it's all the things Again, you know, we, we try to remove everything that would stop you using the car, a bit like the road car. And I, I, I'm hoping people will, will have fun with it. Judging by the chats I've had, people mm. intend to use it in various different ways. Some want us to, to host events. Yeah. Um, some want to use it at their local track, their local sort of country club mm -hmm. track. I had a couple of customers say, we want to take it to every great circuit in the world <laughs> and do a tour. Oh, that would be fun. Right? I can't think of much yeah. better use than, yeah. than that of this car. I'm thinking uh, about driving it somewhere like Spa or Suzuka. Can you imagine? Or Silverstone going down through Maggot's Beckett's. <laughs> we need to try that. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's, turned out, um, it's turned out to be the car we wanted it to be, I think, which is, which is the important thing. You know, it's sort of delivered. Once again, on our seven principles, I think it's delivered. I think the thing that the team are most proud of is that not only is it bloody quick and great fun to drive, but we talked about that breadth of, of um, people's ability that can drive the car. Yeah, that yeah, was so important. That is important, yeah. It's just the facts I still can't get over with, with a car, you know, we, we've talked about mm. the high specific output and the fact it runs a 15 to 1 compression ratio. I mean, it's just, <laughs> when I was growing up, Ten and a half to one was was high, you know. And then you had to run on Avgas if you wanted to run more than ten and a half to one. To stop detonation. One. Yeah. When are um, you going to drive it? As soon as I can. As soon as I can. Well, we've got three prototypes running now, so yes. we've got more cars available. I know they've all been very busy doing doing the real work, but as soon as I can, I'd love to drive it. Yeah. Right. We'll film that. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Gordon. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> We gotta film that. <laughs> Boss man and Tifa, can you imagine? You're gonna love it. I won the competition, just so you know. <laughs> Bloody hilarious. <laughs>